Hello, good morning. My name is Cleo Vargas. I'm the sales director within the company Kimovil. We are a Spanish flexographic water-based ink producer. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about foam and how that affects the flexographic printing process as well as what we can do in order to avoid this type of problem. I hope you like it. This presentation is done by my colleague Laura Pomes, who is the technical director. If you don't know Quimovil, we are one of the biggest ink producers in Spain and we are specialized in water-based ink. So let's go. First, let's talk what is foam. Uh, foam is basically a mass of air that it's put into a liquid and it turns into a bubble. What does create it? Normally, in our world, it is the mechanical movement that we have within the ink bucket, for example, or the injection of air in this liquid, like I said before. Uh, in the case of water-based inks, it's good to understand that this is basically water with some pigments, and in order to be a complete and good flexo-based, water-based ink, we do need to have some wetting agents, dispersants, emulsifiers, additives, etc. And all of them, they look and they behave like soap. So water and soap, foam. If we bring this liquid that we know it tends to create foam to our uh, daily work, we know that in the flexographic printing, the liquid goes through pumps, we have the analog rolls, rolls, we have the scrapers, the agitation within the bucket, etc., etc. All of that will bring and will help bringing air to the liquid and then creating foam. Let's say that you do have foam and then which problems you could have? It will increase the volume, so the ink will start to making foam and could go out or out of the bucket. And then uh, it could also increase the viscosity and if we have a ink that have high viscosity it's harder to print, you know, all of the problems that could bring. Um, what is the importance of the defoamer? Okay, so I'm having foam while you're printing then I should have a anti-foaming in order to counterattack that. It's important to have a defoamer so you can keep your ink in low viscosity. Uh, it's also good if you want to avoid the foam or the speed of the stirrer should be the proper one because if you mix too fast this ink with soap will make uh, foam for sure and last but not least some foam is normal especially after some hours of work so you're having a spray and then you can spray the anti-foam above the bucket it's a very good and necessary solution for the person working within the machine all right so if we do need to have and use some defoamer Let's talk about how many types we have and what are the differences between them. Um, basically, we say you have three types. One is silicon based, second it's mineral oil based, and a third one it's a mix of both of them. Uh, I would divide like this. You have the ones that are used for short term. For example, the guy printing in the machine will use this type of anti foam and then long-lasting effect of the anti-foam, which it's normally used by your ink provider who should have the proper amount of that, this type of anti-foam within the formula. Now, of course, there are some good practices while you're printing in order to avoid creating foam. The first one is that you are pre periodically checking the viscosity of the ink. And if it's getting too thick, you have to add water or the extender varnish in order to balance the formula. The second one, you should have a spray top type of bottle with the mix that your ink provider advises you to. So whenever there is foam on the surface of the bucket, you can control it by spraying it. And this is very good because you also control the amount of anti-foam you're putting in there. 
you don't want to decompensate the formula. And of course, that goes to the third point. You don't want to overuse. Everything in excess is not good. This is everything I wanted to talk to you about foam. I hope that this has helped you understanding a little more. Of course, there are many other problems, unfortunately, with when you print with water-based inks. One of them is a low pH, which will also make the ink thicker. For example, uh, when you work with inks that go back and forth to the machine many times, and then you decompensate the formula, as I was talking before, and all of that can be a big problem. But I think problem is something to talk in on the next video. I wish you the best, thank you very much, and if you need any more information, here you have all of my contacts and I'll be happy to help you. Have a good day.